with Gennady last year and, and with Max. He said, go fight him. And, and it wasn't that he was stretching, you know, a lot of fighters say, I will fight, but then all of a sudden, the financial conditions, or the doping, whatever, there's always an excuse with Gennady. It wasn't an excuse. I mean, Luda Bella made a lot of sacrifices to make the fight with Macklin, and we made a lot of concessions on our side to make the fight a reality, but those are how these big type of fights get made. And when you have a champion like Gennady, we're willing to make concessions in order to further his career and make the fight a reality in the ring. And that's, I think, what sets him apart is the fact that he is one of them. But in terms of an opponent for November? Oh, yeah, getting back to that. So, um, I mean, the winner of Giel or Barker, I mean, you know, Daniel Giel has a, a, a title. It's not the title that he started with when, uh, when he was forced to fight or when he was supposed to fight Gennady. But, I mean, he's still a great champion. Um, of that fight is a reality, although it's my understanding that they have a mandatory coming up. But you know, Martin Murray put on a great performance against uh, against Sergio. A lot of people thought that he might have won that fight over there in Argentina. Um, so that would be interesting. It's just that Murray has had visa problems, but you know, fighting Murray in England, that would be a possibility too. Even though it's unusual for a champion to go to someone else's backyard, if if that's a fight that makes sense down the road, he would do that because that's a great fight as well. Um, is, it safe, is it safe to say that August, September is going to be one of the, kind of like the one you had in, was in March with Sheeta, maybe overseas, maybe? It, it really depends on, I mean, we have November, that's that's a great option on HBO, but if there's a different op option that comes up, we would certainly take that and we can adjust the November date. So it really depends on what opportunities come up and if it makes sense, you know, for a script, because there's a lot of things that change constantly. I mean, Chavez was supposed to fight in June and then July and then August now he's September 7th and we're still not sure if he's going to fight in September. So a lot of things change in the middleweight division. So after a performance like this, I think it'll open up a lot of doors and it certainly made HBO be excited with the performance. And I, I know they were supportive before the fight and they'll be 10 times more supportive after this fight. Is it frustrating for you as a promoter at all or as long as you get your fighter a fight, it's okay because I know you, you said Barker or your Gil, but Gil already done. He gave up the belt. And Eddie Hearn said he has no interest in fighting Golovkin with Barker because, you know, he cares for his fighting. So... Well, Eddie, actually, I have a lot of respect for Eddie, but after the boxing fight, he said he's not ever going to let any of his fighters fight him out of here. <laughs> so, uh, it was frustrating last year. We have to say it was very frustrating last year. This year, uh, you know, having fought twice on HBO within six months, a lot of fighters can only hope for that, uh, and making three title defenses, and and each one of those, uh, you know, financially were very re rewarding for Gennady, and it was a great step in his career. And it's a situation now that I think this performance will open up a lot of doors. So the frustration was behind us last year. This year, you know, and, you know, Felix Storm ducked him for two years, and pretty much did everything he could to avoid the mandatory. Daniel Gill, you know, gave up the title, but at some point. People are going to realize that, that he's the best middleweight champion and he's becoming the most marketable middleweight champion as well.